Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited for this one because I've had so many people on the show and there's few people who have actually been so dope. We're like, you know what? Let's just bring them back again. Let's see what's happened over the last year. Let's see what new things they've learned about entrepreneurship and business. And most importantly, how they can help the schools over now with well, audience. And ladies and gentlemen, we got the guy, none other than Tay Sweat back in the building. What's going on, bro? My man, my man, what's going on? Thanks for having me again. Listen, man, I'm excited for this one because so many people hit us up and they're like, yo, I like the way Tay talks because I never really understood investing, never really understood trading, but the way he simplified things, the way he talked about STB, you know, he's the only person we trust to really break down a game to us. But I want to jump back, right? Because our audience is familiar with you. They're familiar with your story. And I think what's so interesting about you is how fast you got to the millions. And I remember you, you talking about how you touched a million dollars at 26 years old. What did that feel like, fam? I mean, first of all, it's it's so surreal because you hear about a million dollars as this big, you know, pie in the sky, you know, oh, if I could just get to a million, right? It felt great. But when you do all the work, because I've been putting in work since I was 16, right? So you put in all the work and you get to a million, you realize, hmm. This isn't enough. <laughs> so I got to a million at 26. I had a small baby celebration. Um, at the time, I was driving a 2011, 2010 Toyota Camry. So I was still kind of, you know, kind of low key. You know, most people who touch a million, they would be spending crazy amounts of money, right? Thanks. I said, you know, I still drove old, you know, Toyota Camry. You know, at the time it was old. And uh, what I did nice for myself was I went out and bought a new Toyota Camry. <laughs> it was a 2018 Toyota Camry. It had the red seats. It was beautiful. Mm. And I said, oh, this will do. This will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> My man played it modest. You know, so many people right now, like, yo, if they touch the air, they're like, you know what? Let me go get the dream car. You know what's so funny? Tell that we talk about it. I don't even think people got to touch an M to go try to get their dream car. They touch their first six <laughs> figures. And they like, yo, how can I, yeah. how can I write the Lambo off, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> how can I, how can I figure out how to do those things? You know, for a lot of our listeners right now that are thinking about investing, sometimes when we look at it, it's like, hey, man, this looks a little tricky. Or how do I know what's these charts? Like, how, how do I read these charts? How did you overcome the learning curve to understand investing? That's a great question. The first thing, as I told myself, anything that makes a lot of money, it's going to be tough. Right. It's going to be tough. And I need to find out if I'm going to do something tough. First of all, I need to find out what can make me the most amount of money. Right. Mm. So I started looking at other rich and wealthy people and I said, OK, it seems like there are three main things that wealthy people do. Stock market. Build a business, you know, Jeff Bezos, something like that, or real estate. So I said, okay, what's going to be the easiest route? And honestly, the easiest route is going to be one or two things. Business, because you can bootstrap your way up, you know, through business and, you know, go out and knock on doors and do whatever you need to do. Or you can start investing in, you know, stocks, trading stocks more especially, because investing takes a long time to make a couple hundred bucks. But if you know how to trade and take advantage of the market going up and down, that's when it gets a little bit uh, faster as far as your returns. So after I kind of laid all this out, man, I said, okay, well, if it's going to be hard, let me at least figure out how or who can teach me how to do it. So that is when it kind of, you know, all of the, not all, but most of the intimidation and the most of the, you know, man, it's going to be hard. Those thoughts that, you know, cloud my head. Mm. I said, man, if I have a coach, if I have somebody who can actually teach me what they already do. Mm should be a little bit easier and that's exactly how it you know how it played out so i was super grateful for my coach shout out to david that was one of my first coaches and from there it's history oh man i like this because you know so many people try to learn and they go to youtube university and they, they get frustrated when youtube university doesn't teach them how important has it been for you as you you know evolve and had new businesses that you've started? How important is it for our listeners right now to understand the value in getting coach? Man, that's huge. The biggest thing 
that I learned in my journey. My first coach actually told me this, which, you know, take it, you know, take it how you feel you should. But he goes, the more you pay, the more you pay attention. Mm. Right? His name, his name was AJ Mirzad. I'll never forget him. And, you know, I paid him a lot of money. But right when he told me, the more you pay, the more you pay attention, it made sense. Because when I gave him that large amount of money, right, we're talking, you know, over 10K. Mm. Instantly, whatever he said, I was listening. I was like, okay, <laughs> and what next? <laughs> and what next? Because now you have my money and I have to find a way to make that money back, mm. right? So for me, I'm super invested. And there was things that it really clicked because there was things that he, he taught me that, I mean, literally your mom might've said something like this, like, oh, you know, make sure you invest in your business and don't spend all your profit. Make sure you put it back into you. little stuff that like wisdom from like parents, you know, mm. it's little stuff, but you don't listen to the parents. Why? Because it's free information. Oh. You go, <laughs> right? You just shrug it off. It's like, eh, okay. But when you pay for it, that information sounded so much better. And that's when I started following it because, hey, I've paid for it now. So now I'm going to pay attention. Ah, right, man, listen. You know what I like about this is that what you're telling us right now is such a mental game. Mm-hmm. When, when someone wants to give us the game or wants to give us insights. Like when you look, you look at trading, right? There's obviously good days. There's obviously bad days. Do you view that as a space where you have to really be mental and protect your mindset when it comes to trading certain stocks? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I say that because there's many components or I call them switches that you can click to set off certain emotions. For example, if you put too much money into a stock and it starts going against you, you get crazy. Your heart starts beating. You start sweating. You start you know, pacing the room. <laughs> it's because you have too much money in that stock. Right. So the number one thing that I teach my people, I say, listen, you need to find um, some small amount of money that you can put into a stock that if it goes to zero, it's like, well, I was going to spend it anyway. Mm. So we call it, you know, we call it red bottom money because, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I like every now and then I buy a pair of red bottoms, whether it's for me or my wife. And sometimes I say, well, instead of spending, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars on a pair of red bottoms, why not just put this in the market? And if I can flip this in a couple of days, couple of weeks, and then go get the red bottoms for free, then cool like that like that's almost like a no-brainer like of course i'll buy the red bottoms now i didn't pay for them so i do that because if i also lose that money guess what i was gonna go get the red bottoms anyway oh man <laughs> you know what's cool about how you, how you break down uh just your thought process and i think this is a huge takeaway for a lot of people listening a lot of us are a waste of money right a lot of us are a waste of money a lot of us have intentions of like you can probably think right now of at least three things you want to purchase. But to Tay's point, what if you did an investment or trade or something and you say, you know what? I want to try to figure out how to get this for free. And if I'm going to lose this money or I was going to spend this money anyway, why not put it somewhere where it works for you, right? I think a lot of people right now that are listening to this, they want their money to work for them, but they also want to know, okay, what are some stocks that I should really be paying attention to? Are there any like bulletproof? I know that's a bull, that's a real bold statement, but are there, are there any like stocks that you have traded in the past that you feel the most confident with as someone right now that's looking to invest? You're like, you know what? All right, I can go put my money here and expect some type of return in a couple of months or a couple of years. Absolutely. Um, honestly, the best thing for someone just starting out who you don't want to put in the work to learn, you know, the everyday move or the day-to-day move. You just want to put some money somewhere and let it grow for the next few years. You probably going to want to go with some type of index. So we're looking at, you know, S&P 500. Uh, I like, you know, VOO or the SPY. VTI is another good one. Uh, you can get into other like indexes as well. But these things are going to not only pay you for what we call appreciation. This means the stock is going up, but they're also going to pay you for holding it, which is a dividend. Mm. Right. So that's probably going to be the best for anybody just starting out. Now, as you, you know, as you want to start making money quicker or you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, then you could do what I do. And I have five ways of investing and I do all five. So for me, I start at a very small level where I may trade $1,000 at a time. 
And as I make 30% here and there, I take the profits and I kick it over to a larger account in mm. which I go a little bit longer. So instead of day trading, maybe I swing trade for a couple of months. I take that profit and then I put it into a longer account because it's safer. Cool. So that may be, you know, eight month hold or a year, you know, I might sometimes it may even take a year and a half. So that's a little safer. And I take that profit, <laughs> right? And I put it into something that's more like safe, long term, dividend, you know, paying. And that is pretty much how it really starts to make it work on all levels, right? Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I usually suggest for people who are just starting out. It's just go go to the safest route first, and then get it sophisticated. You know what I like about the, your breakdown of this is that it's really looking at you know everything from a business standpoint. You know, and, and I'm curious from a, a time consumption standpoint. Like, do you spend majority of your time, or how often, or how, how much time are you putting in? And just saying, you know what, I want to learn, I want to study, I want to watch what's happening before you make some of the moves you make. Absolutely. That's a great question, too. Um, For me, what I tell everyone is, first of all, you're going to need to know the actual ins and outs of, we call it chart watching or charting. You're going to need to know the ins ins and outs of that first. But once you learn, and that may take you, uh, I have two different time frames. If you're going to watch videos, it's going to take, I need at least two years for you to learn it because watching videos takes longer to learn. Uh If you're going to, uh, or if you want to shrink that time into about six months, uh, one-on-one coaching is going to be the best route because I can turn a newbie into a profitable trader in about six months. Um, Yeah. So, but once again, that's the difference between YouTube or, you know, some type of course and actually get one-on-one help. Um, so for me, that being said, um, I absolutely like people to say, you know, start with a reasonable, you know, time frame. Like, okay, this is this is what it's gonna take. Once you get your time frame together, then you also know, okay, because I got one-on-one coaching, I have a, a reasonable time frame, this is what I should expect. Mm. And if you don't have, or if you once you have that, let me say it that way, once you have that, then trading becomes super easy because now. I know the information because I've gotten the education. I personally and any of my students, they'll go into the market and literally 30 minutes, we might go look at the charts. Boom, boom. Okay. And I tell all of my people to focus on maybe one or two stocks. So you go, you look at the maybe the weekly time frame. So okay, cool. I like the weekly. Boom. All right. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. You don't need to look at it every day. Right. Mm-hmm. I see it in a couple of weeks and you let that, you know, you let it swing for a couple of weeks, couple of months. You come back once it hits your alert. All my alerts come to I don't have my watch on right now, but all my alerts come to my Apple watch. As soon as, you know, the target hits, I get an alert on my watch. Oh, let me check my phone or let me go open up my laptop. Boom. Look, look at that. I'm up 100 percent, 150 percent, 80 percent. All right, cool. Take my trade. All right. I'm out of there. Made my money in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And then I look for the next entry. Uh, That's exactly how I do it. Uh, this, this is good, right? You're, you're giving us a game plan. You're giving us strategies that we can apply. I'm pretty sure a lot of you right now are writing it down. One of the things I think that makes you so different from a lot of traders uh, right now that are out here is that you have the ability where you've created a huge social media presence. And mm-hmm. a social media presence from hundreds of thousands and millions uh, on Instagram. And I can imagine when you're trying to grow a social media presence, there's different ways and different strategies that can get you quote unquote viral, right? Partnerships, working with certain people, or perhaps maybe finding ways to get your message out there. And a lot of entrepreneurs right now are putting their money and they're spending their money in different ways to get, you know, exposure or find, you know, new people who can help expand their audience. And the real big thing I think that is stopping a lot of people from trading or stopping a lot of people, even from entrepreneurship is understanding who to trust, who to listen to. And that's this word that is gone. As you can might say, it might be viral for some, but it's a word that is being thrown out there a lot. And that is scamming. And let's, 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 let's break this down. Right. And I can imagine you, you're somebody who have been involved with so many different people that scammers got to come out of nowhere. So let's just like jump into it. Has there ever been a moment 
where you looked at maybe partnering with somebody, working with somebody, or putting, you know, STB, which is your brand, in front of a new audience where a scam might have gotten involved? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. So I've been scammed a couple times. I've been scammed a couple times. But the biggest one was about $35,000, dollars Oh man, hold on, wait, break it that way. You, you said it, you said $35,000, $33,000 like it's light work, man. <laughs> Someone owes me $35,000, $33,000. We got to find a way to get it. Break us down, like, like what exactly happened? How did you get scammed out of $35,000? Absolutely. Uh, so let's get into it. So um, basically, I was, you know, helping a lot of people already with STB and something I've done in the past is I like to bring in or tie in the culture, right? So I said, hey, I could teach the culture a lot about investing. I just need more people who have access to the culture. So for example, you know, the STB uh, theme song was made by Gucci Man, Mm -hmm. right? So I went and paid Gucci, you know, great deal. Everything was great. Gucci and his team, amazing. Right. His manager's amazing. Everybody shout out to Snake. That's his manager. And they they did they went well. We showed up at the, you know, the uh, studio, Gucci. He did his thing, right? So I'm thinking, okay, cool. I like this. It it works, right? Fast. Let me find someone else who can also reach the culture. So we have the hip hop side of it, but let me find more of like the comedy. Cause I was noticing a lot of the skits, like the you know, the comedy skits were going crazy on Instagram, right? For sure. So, so I said, okay, there's only like maybe five really good, like, com- you know, comedians who could do a skit. So I go, okay, let's, let's try this guy, right? Ha Ha Davis. Oh, love, you know, love Ha Ha Davis, right? Love, love his, you know, his stuff, you know, uh, you know, he always, you know, he had that one thing where he always did, you know, you know, traitor man, traitor man. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> like, you know, it was always a good thing. So I was like, man, I really like Ha Ha Davis. I said, okay. Well, just like I did with Gucci, let me see if I can, you know, reach out to somebody in his camp and see if we can do some work together, right? Absolutely. Well, well, you know, Ha Ha Davis's camp was not as good as, you know, Gucci's camp. So um, I reach out to the guy and say, hey, you know, I'm looking to do a few skits. Um, how does that work with you all? You know, I have money. Let's just, you know, figure out some pricing, some times and some dates. We'll figure it out from there. So it's like, yeah, absolutely. You know, we like to book five, you know, sessions in advance. And then, you know, from there, if we like you, you know, if everything works out, you can do five more. I was like, okay. I said, well, what's five going to cost me? Mm-hmm. Well, $30,000, $35,000. It was somewhere in there, but I want to say it was like thirty-three, thirty-five. dollars okay? Mm-hmm. I said, okay. I said, well, I'm, I'm going to go out on good faith because that's how I operate. I, I'm a person that expects people to do the right thing. That's just who I am. And that's how it's easy to scam me because I, I'll just send you money because you said you were going to do what you said you were going to do. So I said, okay, cool. Here's 30, 35,000. Let's do it. So, okay. Now, now that you have the money, you see that I'm serious. I'm not messing around. Let's come up with this schedule. So how about we get started? I, mean, I know he's a busy man, so I'm okay with, you know, maybe two weeks, something like that. He's like, yeah, we'll do two weeks. And, you know, if you really want to get really going at the time, I was living in Miami. I said, hey, you know, I can fly him to Miami and we can do skits together. Like, I'll be in the skits. He's like, yeah, that's perfect. You know, we'll do flights, da, da, da. Cool. He said, so what we'll do is we'll do the first one here and then we'll get it to you in two weeks. If you like that, then we'll go with, you know, some other stuff. I said, okay. Well, two weeks comes by I'm like okay oh two weeks. okay four weeks goes by i'm like okay once again i'm a patient man i'm a patient man <laughs> four weeks goes by i'm like okay right, so now i'm hitting them up hey man you know everything good you know I'm, I'm busy over here too so i get it i'm doing my work but i just want to check on you you know you got thirty five thousand dollars. what's up thanks so then he's like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, we're gonna get to it you know Haha, is ready. He's super excited to get this going. So I'm like, okay. All right. A month and a half, two months go by. Now I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. Mm mm. This ain't it. This ain't it. So, honestly, man, at this point, I'm kind of heated. And 
I want to do something like crazy to this man now. I'm like, hey, I got to get my money back. Like, oh man, you know, thirty five thousand dollars. It's it's time to fight. Like I'm ready to fight. <laughs> it's not lunch money. It's not light work. Right. Seriously. So I don't know anybody else who would just you know be this patient. You know, like I said, I'm a patient guy. So I don't know. I mean, would you be this patient with thirty five? Nah. Listen. I mean, how, how long was it before you started to feel like the like? Hey, look, I, where's my money? Oh, did you say you say you waited four weeks? Oh, we're two months in now. So oh, two man. months. Now I'm now I'm thinking I don't even want mm-mm, whatever I pay for. Forget the we, skits. We don't want that. Yeah. Forget the skids. Forget. I want my money back. Like at this point, send me my money. So two months in, um, I ask, I you know, request for my money back, and I don't get any response. Right. So now I'm thinking, ah, I see what's going on here. Then ran off, then ran off with it. Right, ran off on a plug. Okay, okay. So what I now do is, and see, here's a, the beauty about you have to be careful who you, you know, what you do to people because you never know who you're dealing with. Right? You never know who you're dealing with. And I'm pretty smart in the way I move. So I have protection on all levels, right? Digitally, physically, whatever. So I have a, I mean, you could call them a security team, but they're a little bit more than that. And my security team has pretty high up clearance. We're Uh talking about, yeah, we're talking about federal clearance. So Uh my guy, he's like, hey, you know, he he checks on me every, pretty much every day. He's like, hey, is there anything you need? I actually do need something. Uh, There's this guy, you know, Ha Ha Davis, who... His team, I don't know if it was him or not, but his team, they say they were going to do certain things. They made promises. They have $35,000 of my money. And I don't know where it is. They're two months in now. And we still, like, I just want my money back now. So he's like, all right, boss. Shout out to Matt. Matt is his name. Mm-mm. And he, he, always, he goes, all right, boss. So I tell you what, you fly us up. You know, I'll find him. I'll find out where he is. I'll find everything. But you you get us where we you know where we need to go, pay for the plane tickets, pay for the hotel. We'll go up there. We'll get that money back. <laughs> so okay, on on a mission, on a mission, right? So I'm like, okay, all right, Matt, let's do this. So, uh, long story short, man, you know they rally up the team. Uh, Matt and one of one of the other guys on the team go up to. Um, I'm not going to say the area because I don't want to air him out, but pretty much his hometown. If anybody knows him his hometown. And, you know, Matt now has everything. He knows his full name, Carlos. You know, he's like, I know where his mom stays. I know. <laughs> Literally, Matt has everything. So they go up on a random Sunday. Not a Sunday. Bang on the door, on his mom's door. Oh, man. Right? Bang on his mom's door. And basically, the mom comes out. She's, you know, sick or something like that. So she, you know, she's scared. Uh, because my guys have on full suits, like they look like federal agents. They full oh, suits, yeah. right? Black, you know, black and white suits. Uh, they got the guns on the, you know, on the way. Like literally, Man. they're ready to go. And uh, basically, they ask, "Hey, where's Carlos? Uh, he owes our boss a lot of money, and basically, we, you know, we need that money back." Uh, so they, you know, they knock it out and they get him on the phone, and. <laughs> Oh, man. It it just turns into this whole crazy this like spicy. thing, man. <laughs> and basically, um, Carlos and his manager, uh, they had no communication. So Carlos, ha ha, Davis had no idea about me, about the skits that I paid for. Oh man, none of that, right? His manager was like a family member. I want to say it was like a cousin or something. And basically, now both of them are mad. <laughs> Imagine because, that, though, right? They're both, they're both probably mad at, mad at each other, and the, the fact mm-hmm. that actually showed up. Absolutely, absolutely. So we basically go through that whole thing, man. Um, and I told my guy, I said, "Listen, y'all don't leave until we we got we got that wire, right?" Um, so long story short, man, everything went down like. No, no physical altercations had to happen. They were, you know, shaken up enough. 
And um, yeah, man, I, you know, they end, ended up sending the money back pretty much the next day because you can't send wires on a Sunday. So uh, pretty much the next day we got the money back. Um, and luckily I was one of the people who had the resources to, uh, you know, go after a scammer because most people would not have been able to do it. Oh man, listen, let's, let's break this down, man, because I think there's a lot of lessons that people could learn right now from this one. Uh, you want to be able to put yourself in a position, especially with the word scam and so many different scams happening, put yourself in a position where similar to Tay, where you have the resources to do what he did, right? A lot of people would have been out of the money, never saw the money again, and would have just been on Instagram or YouTube just going ballistic, just going absolutely mm-hmm. crazy. So how important do you think it is for people right now when it comes to being scammed? How important do you think it is for them to, one, do their research? Because you learn a lot from this situation. Like, how mm-hmm. important do you think it is for people to do their research? And what advice would you give them in trying to avoid being scammed? Absolutely. Um the biggest, the biggest thing, because we tend to take care of each other, right? If someone takes my money and then somebody else who wants to work with that person ask me, hey, what was your experience with this person? Mm. Because my money is gone, I'm going to be absolutely honest and maybe even a little bit more than honest, right? Like, hey, they, they suck, you know, don't over there. So my first thing I tell everyone is find at least three to five people who have worked with whomever it is you want to work with find three to five people who've you know and it doesn't have to be friends family literally go to their page see who some of their you know top comments are people who are like man i love you because if they have honestly usually you're going to find your coach your whoever you want to work with online it's probably gonna be youtube instagram facebook something right thanks if you go through their page i almost guarantee to you their top comments or their their most uh, commented uh, individuals are probably going to be some type of customer, right? Somebody who's purchased something from. So what I do, I just go through look, you know, look through the comments. It's like, man, I saw this person. You, it's like you comment on every post. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Who are you, right? Who are you? I, I need to see that. Um, and I may ask, you know, five people in the comments. Hey. I'm looking, I'm thinking about working with this person. What was your experience? Um, be honest with me. And usually nine times out of 10, you're going to get, and, and sometimes you're going to see negative comments. Of course. Go to that person, right? Go to that person too. Hey, have you worked with this person before? And you may get, you know, you may get like, and that's why I say do like three to five people, because sometimes even me, and I'm being totally transparent. There's going to be people who you go to and ask, Hey, I want to join Tay's, you know, STV. What you think about it? And they're like, don't do it. I lost money. And it's like, okay, how? Mm. It's like, well, I got to the stock market and I put some money into a trade and then I lost money. It's like, okay. So you expect number one to win all of your trades. I don't think anybody is doing that, right? Number two, did you actually study the content that Tay put out there? Mm. Right? And see, I I say it that way because Nine times out of 10, and most business owners know this, nine times out of 10, if you are an ethical business owner who's you know running a good business and your stuff works, you're still going to get that one, two percent of people who just, they don't follow what you're supposed to be following, right? It's like, hey, I came in and I was ready for quick results. I just skipped through all the stuff and I, I just went straight to action. Well, that's going to be a, it's probably going to be a bad result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a bad result. So that's why I say go to three to five people because you're gonna get those people who they came in, they didn't do, they didn't follow what they were supposed to follow, and then they got a bad result. That happens, right? It happens to me. It happens to anybody who runs a good ethical business. Part of the game. Hundred percent. Listen, it happens to any anybody beyond just if you if you're a course creator, right, or have a community. You could be simply a one on one coach. Mm-hmm. And we, we've all had clients who have been a- a- excelled in so many different ways. And we've all had clients who simply didn't listen to you or do the work. And it, and it kind of brings me back to, you know, something that you gave our audience and Jimmy gave us earlier. The more you pay, the more you pay attention. Right. Mm-hmm. Those people, if we if we go through all the clients we've helped or all the people in our communities or all the people we've worked with, the people who really spent that bag. 
got some phenomenal results. And I think I think those people who've gotten those phenomenal results, I think whether they're still with you or going on to do other great things, it's up to them now to take what they've learned and continue to apply it, right? Uh, so I, I appreciate you so much for just breaking that down. Right now, Tay, I want to ask you a question. I've asked you this question before in the past, but I can imagine your answer has changed now when you learned so much since last time you were on the show last year. If you were that person who was listening to this podcast, whether you are that entrepreneur, that person who is getting ready to cross that stage this year, or perhaps just walked off that stage, or don't even have a degree at all, but you're asking yourself the question of the podcast, school's over, now what? What advice would Tay Sweat give? Man, that's a great question to think about. Okay, my biggest thing is, um, and I don't honestly, I don't even remember what I said last time. So maybe it's the same, maybe it's the same answer. But I, I have to say this: uh, your education never stops. Mm. So when school is over, that doesn't mean you kick your feet up and you go, "Okay, let's get to work." You know, I'm just going to work a job. I'm just going to, you know, go make, you know, collect the check. And that's it. I've done all of my schooling. I've done all of my learning. And no, 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 no. When you get out of school, college, high school, whatever it is, you just got started. You basically just learned your ABCs, Mm. (laughs) right? It's now time to learn. And I'm going to say this, and it's not, it's not a, it's not to throw shade. That's the best way I can say it. But it's not to throw shade or you know kick dirt on the teachers who are like the professors, mm-hmm. right? It's not. It's not to do that. But I have to say this: the reason why I say your education needs to continue is because in school, more especially like college, a lot of times your professors were not applying what they say they were teaching you. Oh man! Right. So if I am in entrepreneurship class, I'm probably not learning from a, a successful entrepreneur. Oh, man. <laughs> right? I'm probably learning from a professor who studied entrepreneurs. I need an actual entrepreneur. Right? Oh, man. So for me, I'm going to say, okay, you've learned from the people who have not applied it, but maybe they have more of a, a book or educated, you know, approach from, you know, maybe just scholastically. Mm. But now I need someone who has done the application side of it. I need someone who's actually been through, oh, this is what happens when you hire people. You need to make sure you do this. You need to make sure you do that. And here is, you know, the taxes you're going to have to pay on hiring those employees. And, right? You need people who've actually done the work. So now you have to go and pay those people for the education and get them to pretty much stop doing what it is they're doing to make money. Right? So if they're a uh, successful entrepreneur, you say, hey, hey, you tap them on the show, you say, hey, I need you to teach me how you do this. They have they now have to stop doing what it is they've been doing and pay attention to you, right? Mm. So you're going to need to apply some funds to getting them to take the eye off of the ball and then to focus on you. Mm. So for me, that is my number one thing. Just know that education is never done, never. Oh man, listen, man, we we've had some breakdowns, right? We had some people say some stuff, but and I know for a fact you ain't said it last time because we two hundred plus episodes in, and nobody ever ever said it to the point where it's like, listen, you got that degree in marketing, you got a degree in entrepreneurship. It's time to actually go learn from people who are doing that because the people who just taught you that aren't even doing it themselves. They are just applying and reciting the information in a better way where you can digest it. Yo, fam, that was crazy. And I appreciate you for sharing that. And right now, people are listening. They want to get involved with STB. They want to learn more from Tay. Just, you know, share with us how our audience can best stay in contact with you. Most definitely, man. Um, So at Tay Sweat, T A Y. Uh, sweat like normal, like keep sweat, right? S W E A T. I always do that sweat. Uh, so t- at taste sweat, all platforms. YouTube, we do YouTube videos pretty much. Uh, I try to do at least three to five a week. Mm. Um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, we're everywhere pretty much. Uh, so yeah, tap into the information. And if you want to, you know, get my actual attention, if you just DM me on Instagram, I'll usually answer, right? Sometimes I get a little busy. I know I have a one year old. So, you know, I'm spending, you know, daddy time, but, um, but I try to get back to everybody. So yeah, just hit me up. I see what I can do for you. 
Man, listen, Tad, I appreciate you for being on the show. And for those that have been listening, always remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it.